Hi, I'm going to show you how to use this uh, UOP for the Eagle and the Neoden 4 pick and place. Um, this UOP was originally written by Ian Lesnar over at Dangerous Prototypes. And that was modified by a few people, including myself, for the TMT, TM220A, which is another Neoden pick and place. Um, so we recently upgraded to the Neoden 4, and um, I modified the UOP to work with that as well. So first thing first, I have my board loaded into Eagle here, um, and what I want to do is I want to put the board into the same rotation um, as I have it placed on the pick and place. I already have the PCP mounted on the pick and place. I stuck it in an arbitrary location, um, and what I'm going to do is just change the orientation of this board and have the bottom left be at zero zero in Eagle. And even though you can do all this in the UOP, I just like it better to do it this way. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the layers in Eagle and I do this by stacking these commands. So first of all I have this all which means display all and that displays all layers. Group all selects all the layers into a group and then this none means uh, display no layers but then add T origins, T cream and 16. And what will happen is it will flicker for a second, grabs all the layers and now they're highlighted. So the first thing I want to do is rotate it, and so let's rotate it by 90 degrees because the top of my board on the pick place is going to be there. So we'll do that, and to do this you have to come in here and hit that. I'm not sure of another way to get around that, and then I'm going to bring the board back into view. So now what I want to do is make this uh, the uh, zero zero. So the bottom left is going to be zero zero. So the way to do that is have a look at the bottom polygon. And you can see it's at minus 43 as well on there, and it's, it's at 50 now. So let's um, again make sure everything's selected. Uh, if it's not highlighted, it's not selected. And since I clicked it off, that would have done it. Now let's do the move command. Oops, sorry. Uh, what did I say that was? Minus 41. That's 43 and 15. So minus 43 and 15. And now I'm going to finish that move. Because normally you could place it with a mouse. And now the bottom here is going to be 0, 0. Okay, great. So the next thing about the Neoden is that the first uh, part on the on the list is the origin for everything. So zero zero isn't really the origin. Zero zero is the physical offset of the machine. And what we want to do now is to make sure that the physical location of our first component, which is a fiducial, is going to be in the same place uh, in our once we have put it from our script. And so the way to do this is to choose your fiducial. And I do a little quick thing here, and I just name all my fiducials to bring with A to make sure they're always the first components that get selected. I could probably redo the script a little bit so that it looks for fiducials first before it outputs it, but sometimes you don't, you may not be using a fiducial for your first component because you forgot. So the first thing we want to do is look at these two, the position for the fiducial. It's at 5 and 18. So we're going to remember those numbers or remember to look at them later. And if we show that fiducial, it's right there. Um, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that on, on the pick and place, remembering those two numbers. Okay, what I'm going to do here is now um, check whether it's AFID is on the physical PMP. So I'm going to switch to the PMP software and now I'm going to use the move head command and that just allows me to move the head around the field, switch the mouse vectors because that seems to be, you know, the quickest way to move around. So I'm going to roughly choose where it is and then I'm going to go to visual field which is the camera and there's my fiducial. I'm going to hit auto align so that it uses the camera to detect where that fiducial is. Now this number here is um, where it says XY18 uh, uh, 18697. I'm taking note of that number and uh, we're going to use it in a minute. Okay, so now that we have the so we don't need the the pick and place software right now. So we'll flick back. And wh what's basically going to happen is, so if we look before, we saw that 
uh, aphid, which is right here, um, is actually at 518, and it's not where we want it to be. So this is an eagle coordinate space. We want it to be a pick and place coordinate space. Um, some other things about uh, prep for the script is um, some of the command, some of the SMD type um, packages that have holes sometimes not pick up by Eagle because we check the SMD pads. So occasionally, when you want a component complaced um, and it doesn't automatically pick it up, you can switch on force PMP, and that will look for anything called force PMP and always add it. Also, you can put DMP for do not place or no PMP, and uh, it won't place them. Like for instance, on a you know attributes are good because like here he's exclude from the bomb because of what it is. All right, so now that we've done that, we want to run the script. So load the script up, and here is the first path of it. So here is where we would put those two numbers in. So this x y and this x y is the basically the physical x y that we looked at before. Um, on the pick and place, and then have the location of aphid 1 in um, eagle and subtract that number. So subtract from x and x and y and y, and you'll end up with this value. And this value is the offset from 0, 0 to the new 0, 0 on the board. If you're familiar with like CNC, it's like you know you have a machine home, which is a 0, 0, and then you have a work home. Um, it's kind of like that. So we're setting the work home offset as being 0, 0. So if you add 182 and 104 onto the position of the AFID1 in Eagle, you will get the physical position of AFID1 on the PMP. Okay. Here's also, here you can go over the rest of the things on here. This is the override move speed. If you want the run machine to run everything slower, set a value other than 100 here. Um, this is where you can put the rotation in and not do it in Eagle. So um, if you want a 90 degree rotation, put it there. This is where the files will end up. End up. Uh, one for the top wire, one for the bottom wire. Uh, the PMP stack is uh, where this software saves all of its information so that later on when you load it back in, it's it's there. It's just a text file that's um, kind of not easy to read, but that's where it stores all the information. Uh, so when you run this again, it will automatically be loaded. So the first thing you really want to do is um, go to the real configuration and set all your reels up. So here are all the reels, and the way it works is um, there are reels up to number 48 which are the physical reels with um, the ability to, to put on a reel and move and then the rest of them are special ones and these are basically they're not reels you pick them up from uh, anywhere on the PMP's table and you do it in the same kind of way except you specify a ro columns and rows so you normally have a little tray you know 10 by 10 5 by 5 whatever you tell it the physical location of where the right top X and the right top Y is, and then the start X Y um, where is where it would first start to pick up. And so the machine then knows uh, with the number of columns and rows and the difference between these two is uh, where to do it. But this is just the Neodin software. This is all from the Neodin um, software. So if you're familiar with Neodin software, you've seen this already. So um, here is all the thresholds for the vacuum detection. But let's go back to reel number one and take a look there. So what we have is reel number one. We've assigned it nozzle number one, so it will use nozzle number one to pick up. But you can also have it pick up with multiple nozzles. So if you just pick down here, you could say um, if it can choose one, two, three, and four, which means that if there are four pots in a row, it will pick them up with all the nozzles. So uh, here we specify a real name for us to read. It's one k one percent. Um, don't use the percent symbol because percent symbol means something special in the ULP and it will cause a problem. So I just put per or nothing at all. But this is just for you to know uh, what you're going to choose. Uh, this is where we choose the footprint and this is matched in the Neodym Vision software so that it knows, it has a list of um, component sizes that it already knows and you can add to that table as well. Um, so I'll put in, you know, 805, 605, 1210, whatever it is in there as best you can um, and so that you'll know what it is later. Uh, the pick XY is where the feeder is going to be, where it's actually going to pick it from. Uh, these ones I've pre-done myself, figured them all out and put them in and once you've done this um, you can save the stack 
and then later on I can load that back in uh, to another so if I do another board I just start off by loading that stack and that will bring in all my changes so as I add new components or change them I'll just change them in here and uh, it will always be up to date by using the save and load uh, load no space com standard stack uh, there's a list of items that are built into the UOP if you take a look at the UOP code you'll see that it has this list of stacks so this is our predefined uh, what I already had on there and if you started off from completely fresh this is what you'd see you can put your own in here pretty easy because it's actually the same format that Neodin uses so if you open up one of the Neodin CSVs and take a look at it and this is actually one of ours you can see that's that same uh, the same list format uh, for the current version of the software anyway so if you copy from here and you were to put it in here and then just put quotes around it so it needs a quote a, and an end quote and a comma and for everyone but the last line so there's no comma there um, that way the UOP will have your format in there all the time so when you click on the uh, load standard stack um, it will load the one from there and then you can modify them and customize them with the load user and save okay so the next is pick angle and this is the pickup angle so when the part comes on the SMD reel it's in a different orientation some are defined some are not you know easily defined um, so you it's some there is some trial and error there but what this does is reset the, no, the component to a known rotation um, like a home position so what we want to do is set this to a basic core where it when it will be rotated in eagle it will be rotated by the right amount um, otherwise if you leave this to zero you'll find that your components get placed in, in the wrong rotation so set this so that it picks up to a zero rotation uh, when it's on the on on the needle when it's been picked this is the pick height 0.5 is about normal um, you can change this if your component is slightly higher um, or needs to be tuned I think we've got a couple of components here that are like 0.6 here on that USB micro and it doesn't hit it quite as hard pick delay is after it's picked it it will wait a certain amount of time um, for the component to settle any kind of mechanical movement so you can put a delay in there and it will wait um, and again this is just the Neodin software repeated in here um, and so the pick delay is picks the part and it waits and then it moves so it gives it a little chance to settle um, place height is how far the needle will go down away from the PCB so you can see if you have taller components you know it's set to one millimeter if it's you know 605 or whatever it's 805 it's point um, point five of a millimeter everything is in millimeters so I'll just update that one because it wasn't in there and then when you hit accept it will update all the values and now I can save that and it's now saved okay so then you go through and, and uh, uh, put the rest of the things in place delay is basically after it moves um, the part over where it's going to place it, it stops and pauses, allowing it to do any kind of mechanical setup again. So if you're having problems with parts moving around um, as they're being transported, you can either slow it down or you can use a place delay. It sometimes helps on larger parts. Move speed is just how um, slowly it moves uh, during the from the reel to the um, to the place where it's going to place it and then how slowly the uh, nozzle is going to go down so that's uh, one speed for both it does both the movement of the head and the movement of the needle going down um, it's not separated which would be nice but um, you can't do that on the Neodin yet uh, vision checkbox is just whether or not you want vision uh, detect uh, vacuum detect is detect so it's vision and then vacuum detect it's kind of awkwardly done there but not all space skip means skip the part, size correct means that you're using the um, the footprint that's known in the Neodym software and then the feed torque and the peel strength is the feed torque for the uh, pulling on the on the reel um, so when the motor pulls the reel it's how hard it pulls it sometimes it pulls it too hard like an 0603 with a feed torque is probably going to bounce some parts so I like reduce it down and it's trial and error to see you know and you're best to do that in the setup of the machine um, and trying it and then just copy those values into here Peel strength is that hard it, it pulls on that on the, the follower tape. Um, so again, if you're peeling, if if components are bouncing, it's often that the peel strength is too high. So we usually reduce the pull strength a little bit. Um, and if the part is not advancing correctly, 
and probably the feed torque is too low. Uh, if the um, plastic feeder is not being pulled up properly, then the peel strength might need to be adjusted. And obviously, you know, a lot of people say, how do you make them always work? And I put weights on them. I have little mini bulldog clips, and I put weights on them, and that really seems to help with uh, with pulling them. And that's a really common thing for a lot of different places that are this type is to put on there. Um, the feeding rate is uh, how much to advance um, for each new component. So I know uh, I know 805 is four, and so you know like a micro USB connector is is 12. So you would figure all these out um, as you were going through. You can see that one's eight, uh, and that's a that was a 35 35 LED. So you would normally do all that configuration on the machine itself. But I'm I'm not really teaching you how to use the machine here, just to recreate what the machine creates in its GUI in this software. Um, and then these are the various thresholds for the vacuum detect um, for each of the nozzles. So you can preset um, for each part how much of a vacuum detect is going to be because it does vary. Okay, so that's all of the ones for the reel. Um, for the, the ones that pick up off the board, so these are the after 49 are the special feeders. Uh, so those ones are picked off directly off the uh, machine's bed. And that is the simple as you said, columns, rows, uh, top and start X. So you define the center point of the components, uh, right top X and Y, and then it's bottom left, uh, sorry, bottom left, yep. And then it will um, make it use a tray, right? And that's So that's the only difference there. So it automatically advances. Unfortunately, of course, if you restart it, you have to start from the first one again. There's no offset, but again, I'm not recreating the Neodin software at the moment. I'm just um, using what they already have. Um, so you would set the rows, the columns, start X and start Y, just as you would do in the Neodin GUI. Uh, you just have to do it here. And then there's up to 99, which is all of them. So again, once you've done any changes in real, you must click accept or cancel, and it will either lose the changes or save the changes and again you can save them again um, so that you have them for others and if you go back to the machine later after we've exported this and change anything and uh, change any of the parameters or the pickaxe it is best to come back to the ULP and change it there because if you regenerate it then the values will still be the same and you won't have to keep tweaking it and uh, you know because the pick position does kind of move around sometimes a little bit depending on how you set things up or if you've re-reeled um, so I think that's everything covered on the, on the real section. So the next thing we want to do is look at the parts list and make sure that all the parts we want to pick a place are there. And they look like they are. And there's some you know test pads that got picked up because they're SMD pads and I don't have a, uh, anything to say don't, but that's okay because we don't really care about them. There's not a lot. And then here is the real assignment page. So you can see here is our list of parts that we're going to place. And because there's more than it wants to display, it's got two top layers. Um, this will turn into one when it's actually exported, but just in the GUI, rather than have a giant screen, it just splits it into multiple tabs. So the, if you have lots of components, you have lots of tabs, if they're not shared. So the first thing you want to do is go in and say, assign a reel. And in this one, I just have a reel called Fiducial, just so that I can know it. It doesn't do anything, um, because we have it as skip. So you pick your reel, um, you can either drop it from the, the number or choose it by the name that you want to do it. And then here you can also choose the nozzle that you want to use. So you're going to override that pickup with that nozzle. Skip is just, does it skip the component or not? It'll still output it, but it just uh, gets skipped. And because it's a fiducial, um, it is included in the CSV, so when we load it in, the machine will use it. It should always be the first part, it's always the one that's going to be the one that is um, the machine uses as a, a home position. So that's why we have fiducials and that's why I call them AFID, so that they're the first because it's alphabetically sorted. So you should make sure they're always the first component. So yeah, you would just go through and pick you know, your different components. I already got these ones collected in, and as I said, you can either choose, you know, I'll change this one to show, but you can change it. And it just changes there as well. So these are both the same. It's just a different way of kind of going through them quickly. Um, again, nozzle up, down to change the nozzle. And do the same thing for that one. We're not placing that one on this particular board. And these are the parts I am placing real quick. And I'm not actually going to run through the place because I've already done it. 
but I just wanted to show how to use the. I'm not doing the bottom layer because there's test points, which something it isn't. So that is more or less it. Once you filter all of these in um, and assigned all of your reels, you basically go back here and you hit OK. And what will happen is it will generate this CSV file and this PMP file, which you don't need. It's just used for uh, the software to recall these settings later. So hit OK. It has generated those files. And if we go back in again and load it, we'll see that it has remembered all of the settings that we did you saw earlier too. So there we go. Okay, great. So now what you would do is you would take these two files, if you're doing both placing, and then and then copy it onto the USB stick and import it on the Neodym. So let's do that. Okay, so I have it preloaded in here. I'm going to edit it. Okay, so hopefully if I did it all right, what will actually happen is now is that my position for the align is there it is. So this is going to be the reference for it. Um, so all of the parts are going to to reference off here. Now what you can do is you can hit align there, and like I did. So if you select align on your first component, pick it, and then hit cancel, and then ch change the position. Most of these should stay about the same. But what it'll do is it'll look at the fiducials um, and realign the board. Now what's interesting is I don't change the PCV angle because the fiducial should be able to take care of that. So we're telling it where the fiducial should be, so this one will be off because the board will be terribly slightly rotated. But it will be taken care of when we go to place. That's the idea anyway. If you notice that the coordinates as well um, for the first part are copied here on the on the um so these this component here is going to be repeated here because that is left bottom as far as the Neodym software is concerned. And your panel also starts there. And also, because it's a fiducial, it lives here too. And then for the second fiducial, which is there, has automatically been filled in there. And you know, you can have two or three fiducials. They say use two, so I just use two. And then you can also specify one thing I don't. Um, have yet, I guess I could add, is the minimum maximum size of the fiducial, like we know how big it is, and also which light to use when to do it. So you can actually change this to the inner and outer lamps, and sometimes it just gives it a better picture. So uh, you can change it here. So if you look at the difference, the machine vision picks that up in a different way. I usually leave it on the inner. But because we know the size of this, we can say it's minimum going to be this, it's maximum going to be that. So that's a good thing to set as well. But basically that's it. I mean, every of these parts will be slightly off. But the camera and the fiducials should take care of it all. These will all be rotated ever so slightly. And if you want to, you can go in and use angle detect and run it through the normal way. And again, it should be better. Um, but, you know, the idea is that the fiducials are meant to take care of this. So as long as you've set the where the ideal location of the fiducial is, which is would if the board was perfect, it would be there. Um, but that's what the camera will do, because when you put a new board in, it's going to be in a different place. And if it can't detect new rotations and new positions properly, then what good is it? And it does, because we've run through a few times. Okay, I think that's more or less it. Thanks.